Hi there, and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to install Dakota uh, in a native Linux installation, but also in a virtual machine or even in the Windows subsystem for Linux. Okay, so I assume that you are using OpenSUSE 15.3, so my all the steps that I'm going to show you apply for that version, but should be very similar for different distribution of Linux. So basically, the first thing is that you need to download Dakota. So here you, you know what is Dakota, it's a program for, for, for optimization and automation. So you can come here, download the latest version, which is 6.16, and download only the, 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 the common line auction. Okay, it's the, <clears throat> the one that we need, but also you have a GUI. The GUI is a little bit tricky to, to compile because you have a lot of dependencies, graphical libraries. Also, you have binaries that uh, pretty much they work out of the box. So download your Dakota. <clears throat> now I will move to Linux. So I'm working here in a virtual machine, but if you have a native installation, it's the same. And even you can do it using the uh, Windows subsystem. So here I have it open. So later I'm going to show you a little bit about that. So <clears throat> the first step that you have the code, let's, uh, the source code, let's extract it. Okay. So I go like this. I extract the source code. So the compilation with, with, uh, <clears throat> of Dakota use CC make. Okay. So you have to install that. Usually it comes with Linux, but if you don't have it in install, feel free to install that. So remember that you can use just. So if you have, if you're using, uh, OpenSUSE, you have just, and here you can, <clears throat> you can install everything. So now you go to software management and the other way is using, uh, zipper, uh, zipper. I will show you that in the, in the, when using the Windows subsystem version distribution, but you can use it also here in the terminal window. So for instance, you look for the library that you want to install and you will find it. So it's the make, it is installed and, and so on. So I will leave it open because there are a few other dependencies that we require to compile, uh, Dakota. So here I have it. I already installed everything, but for you, uh, Dakota use, you need to use this library boost. And this is specific versions. Okay. So in the video description, I will put it, but be careful also that you need to do, install a version older than the 79. Okay. So if you follow our previous video, I was using 1.66 that is not supported anymore for the late, for the latest versions of Dakota. So the next version is the 0.75. So basically <clears throat> is you have the old version, just look here, boost. And you install. So see that uh, I have both of them, the six, uh, 66, but now you need the new, the new one. So feel free to install the dependencies. So in the description again, I will put it, but look for these files. Okay. So you can install directly from Jazz or you can use zipper like this and it will install all dependencies. Sometimes if you have an old version, it will give you a message like, what do you want to do with the old version you want to remove or you don't care. So it's up to you to pick up, but please install the new one. So that being said, I can close there. And now that we extract it, we know that we need to use a couple of dependencies. Also you have LaPack blabs, but that usually is, is already installed. I will create a directory. And in <clears throat> this directory, I want to install the binary. So I will call it like this. Let me go inside this directory that I just created. And now I can run CC make, CC make. And then I go, I give the relative path where I have uh, the source code of Dakota. So I go like this, press C to create the configuration file that will drive all, all the compilation will generate all the automatic scripts. So let's wait a little bit. <clears throat> Sometimes can be a little bit time consuming. So basically when running this, also you will see that, uh, this script is checking that you, 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 you have all the dependencies required. So if something fail, it will stop and it will give you the warning. Okay. You are missing this library, this dependency. So your job will be just to install that. So see that we have this, this output, no problem. I will press E exit. And now, <coughs> and now I can do the personalization of this script. Okay. So what I will do now, let me open 
a tap window. So I will do copy of this. This is the location where I want to put the, the binary. So I will show you why do I want that information. So the first is that feel free to read. These are just two configuration actions. So it's up to you to pick up what you want to to use or no or disable, but I recommend you to, <clears throat> I recommend you to use the default values. So for you, the only thing that you need to modify is here. CMake, okay, this one, CMake install prefix. So this is where you want to install the binaries. So erase this one and the directory we say that I will install here. And happy with that. And also we need to do another modification. So now you press T to toggle the advanced options. Okay, and let's go, it should be at pretty much at the end, but see that you have many options there. So it's up to you to choose what you want to enable, disable, or see what is happening there. So let me go here, here, and I move in. So it's, I will recall it's almost at the end. So it's another flag that you need to enable. You just you need to give the right path. And it should be somewhere here, this one. Okay, this one here, Trilino set group and permission. So erase that one and give the location where you want to copy, install the binaries. So that's all you need to do anything else. So let me go to the next page also to show you all the pages that you have there. So you are happy with this. Now press configure. <clears throat> it will regenerate the scripts, everything necessary for the compilation and <clears throat> When it's done, okay, let's wait here. It's almost done. Yes, didn't complain. It's, it's it. and now I can press G. So see the options here in the bottom. Now I have generate. It's creating everything. Okay, and see that now this directory at the beginning was empty. So now he, he created all these configuration files. And at this point, it's just go ahead and install. So I will compile and let me use eight cores and off you go okay so now we need to wait so probably this compilation i don't recall what can be something about 15 mi minutes or 10 minutes i don't recall so let's wait a little bit and then we'll see what happened at the end so see you later Okay, <clears throat> we're back. So as you see, the, the compilation went fine. Quite funny that probably is the one you can test it later. But you, so you have like in my case, the virtual machine, but also you have a uh, Windows system for Linux. You will see that in double USL is faster the compilation using the same resources. So another argument just to say that the performance is, is the same. So at this point that everything went fine, we have the compilation. Okay, we need to install that in this current directory. So to explain what, what, what is happening that we compile everything, but all the compilation happened in this directory. So now we need to type another command to install everything here, headers, libraries, and so on. So that is quite easy. So just type make install and it will install all the files, move examples and everything to the current directory or the directory, this directory where we want to have everything. And that's it. We have a Dakota installation. So the last step, and just to remind you, you will need to modify your bash RC. In my case, I'm using bash shell. So to add the, the path of uh, Dakota. So I will put it this and the video description so you add the path okay so the binaries and 
the examples, and that's all. So you go here, Dakota minus V, and voila, you have a working installation there. Okay, and you are ready to use it now. Okay, so this is the installation in uh, in a uh, native Linux installation. Can be you now partitioning your hard drive or you know virtual machine. <coughs> so now let me give you some guidelines in the in Windows Subsystem for Linux. So here I already installed. So the steps are pretty much the same. Nothing changed. You follow the same guidelines and see that it is fully working. And now I can link you now the Windows files with Linux. It's, it's quite cool what is happening here. The thing that I want to point out here is that here you have the graphical user interface. You have just that nice GUI. So you need to do everything doing uh, using Zipper. Okay, so for instance, uh, so you want to install the boost, okay, you just put it there, okay, in my case I will insert my password, and it will install the, the dependencies, okay, so whatever application you are going to install, you, you need to, to add all the dependencies, just to show you that, let me go here, let me remove, okay, let me say yes. So if I go and I try to compile, it will complain because I have that library missing. So when you run CCMake, you will see an error. Okay, you are missing this library. So just in, <coughs> in some missing dependencies, I'm not going to show you. I don't want to repeat that instead. So now you can install in that way. And um, yes, so sometimes it might happen that if you have older version, it will ask you what you want to do the, with the old version. You don't care, you want to erase, whatever. It's up to you. Usually don't care. So install both versions, not a problem. Might happen that can create conflict. So it's up to you. Okay, you just check if your system is, is, is stable. So let me install here. And also there is, with Zipper, you can search <clears throat> for information. So instead of using install remove or whatever, you go search. And let's say, for instance, <clears throat> let's search boost. Okay, it's show me everything that that have that name boost. So probably okay. So see that it's showing me all these alternative. So this is how you do it, and then it's unique to install something. You have the name there. So also it takes wildcard so you can put there an asterisk and we'll get white white cards so for instance let me see blast and let me put a white card there and see that i have all these options so blast is already installed so that is a basic linear error library very important another important library for instance let's say gsl Okay, so see that in this case, this one is not installed. So this is a general scientific library now. So let, let me install. So I will go install and I want to install. Usually when you have the developers, it's a good idea to, to install the, also the developer and will install many dependencies. So let's go for that one. So see that it's telling you that it's going beside the developer is installing some other libraries. Yes. And now if I go again, they will search. See so that is telling you that install, install, install. Okay, so let me go also install the standard GSL. And that's all. Okay, so the steps here are exactly the same. Nothing changed. So you uh, download uh, Dakota, then extract it, create this one, and this one you're going to install the binaries. You go make install or make J, A, whatever I will do it. And that's all. Uh, something important as well, you might be tempted uh, to move executables for the virtual machine or your partition to the Windows subsystem for Linux, and that will work not all the time so i don't recommend you go and compile i don't recommend you because sometimes in the other installation you have some, some other de dependencies so it's not going to run but it is perfectly valid but i don't recommend to move binaries okay you can move the standard files but binaries is better better to recompile everything so that's all for this video okay so thank you for your attention and hope to see you in our next uh in the next video bye